Good morning, and back to another Bible study here at Hurricane Baptist Church. As we continue a little study on the work of the Spirit, or what the Holy Spirit is doing in our lives once we come to put our faith in Christ. And we remember, we, we turn to God, look through Him, put our faith and trust in Christ, and certain things happen by the Holy Spirit, and, and that's what we're going to talk about as we end up today. But for right now, we're back over in Galatians chapter 5, and we looked at verses 16 and 18 yesterday. And I'm just going to drop down to um, verse 22 real quick, and uh, we're just going to cover uh, the fruit of the Spirit. This is one of those things, when we get saved, when we're born again, we now are indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God, and so then we can have that fruit of the Spirit. That, that uh, I would say, the indication that He's there, the, the, uh, the Him living it out of us is there. The fruit of the Spirit is those nine pieces we talked about here in, in chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Okay, so he's, what he's telling us there is when I, those nine things, okay, it's like if you're going to bake a cake and you got nine ingredients you're going to put in that cake, so you put it all in together. They can't be separated. They're all in there together, and that's like the fruit of the Spirit, okay? That's just uh, showing you that it's a oneness of it. It's not nine different parts. I, when I was early in the ministry and that, I would talk about those nine, and I likened it to like an orange net. It's not like that. You can't separate it. It's all together, all right? So, that's, so those, as a Christian now, those are the things that should be coming out of me. That is, the, the, this should, when we talk about walking in the Spirit, that's the idea. That's what should be coming out. As people look at my life, they should see love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, long-suffering, faith, meekness, temperance, all those kinds of things. And they should be coming out. Now, sometimes, I understand, we, we don't always display, especially things like temperance, and we don't always display the love that we shouldn't have. But those are the things that we work on when we don't do what we should do in the way we should do it. That's when the Holy Spirit can speak to us and say, you know what? Uh, you, you're not really reacting in the right way. You're, you're not really uh, glorifying God by the things you're saying. So that's the work of the Spirit in us now. And I'm going to go a little bit further until I'm going to finish this up today. So I'm going to go to uh, Ephesians in chapter 3. So let's go to cha Ephesians chapter 3 real quick. Just a few pages over. Ephesians chapter 3, and I have down what I want to look at verses 14 to 16. Ephesians 3. Uh, 14 to 16, he says here, uh, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man. Okay, so how am I strengthened to go through this life as a Christian? This, you know, the, the challenges, the temptations, the trials, because we know that all comes to us whether we're a Christian or not. We face those things, so how can I be strengthened to do that? And that's what he's telling us right there. The Holy Spirit indwells me, and so therefore by his power and his presence, I'm strengthened when I allow him to work. All right. When I, when I face the things in life that are a trial, a uh, temptation, if I try to handle it in my own strength, guess what? I'm going to fail. But when I allow God to work in me and use the strength of the Holy Spirit to have victory over it. And so what happens is when, I, when I'm faced with the trial, then I don't just look at it and say, what am I going to do? I say, Lord, what should I do? How should I respond here? And allow Him to lead you and give you the strength to get through it. All right, then I'm going to go down to uh, verse 18 in chapter 5. You know, we'll just jump through here a little bit. I just want to cover some of these things just to kind of tie it together. And so we get over to Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18. He says, and be not drunk. With wine. In other words, if you've ever been drunk, if you ever drink, and some, a lot of you have never drank, and some of you have, but if you've ever been drunk, you know what happens if the alcohol controls the body, don't it? And no, it controls the body, it controls the mouth. A lot of times people say things and do things as if when they're under the influence, when they're controlled by the, the alcohol that they wouldn't normally do or say. And he says, we're in this excess, okay? Uh, drunkenness, it means you're taking alcohol to the, to the extreme. Uh, just a side note, Stay away from it completely, all right? Uh, really, the, the social drinking, all that thing has no place in the life of a Christian. You say, well, I can take a drink of wine or have a glass of wine with my meal, and it don't bother me. But you know what? It bothers a lot of people. And you never know. I just heard an evangelist the other night speaking about that. I said, they show you all the pretty pictures of people having fun that. They don't show you that twisted car with those twisted bodies because a drunk driver ran into a car and killed a bunch of innocent people. So those are the things we want to, as Christians, we're going to stay away from. Don't, don't do that. But he says here in verse 18, you're not going to be drunk with, with wine, but you're going to be filled with the Spirit. Now, we can talk a lot about that, to being filled with the Spirit. And the idea is to be controlled by the Spirit. 
You know, uh, when we get saved, uh, we're, the Holy Spirit moves in. All right, He's in there. So, uh, and He has uh, so much control of our lives. We've, we've submitted to God, put our faith and trust in Christ. And so we're, we're submitted so much of our life to Him. And a lot of times we let Him in the door. And we say, it's like bringing somebody into your house. And you say, okay, uh, you can have the whole first floor. Any place you want to go on this first floor, you can go wherever you want to go. You know, whatever you want to do there, you want to decorate, you want to change, that's all yours to do what you want to do with. And we allow the Holy Spirit to get in that part of our life. And, and then pretty soon, we, we, as we grow and mature in the Word of God, and we'll go upstairs and say, okay, now, uh, we're upstairs here now, so that those, uh, those two rooms down there and their bedrooms now, if you'd like to decorate those and do anything there, you can control whatever happens in those rooms, it's all yours. We give that to you. I'm relinquishing all these this things to the Holy Spirit. I'm letting Him work. And so what I'm doing is I'm taking my life, and little by little, I'm turning my life over to God. But you know, there's uh, one of the things that I've noticed and has talked to people and experienced in my own life, uh, as we let the Holy Spirit take control of our lives, death parts of it, uh, we get to that part, we, we'll get to, he'll have all the house, but he'll, we'll have that closet over there. And we'll tell the Holy Spirit, you can, you can have all the house, you can control all the house, but stay away from that closet. And you know why we're going to stay from there? In that closet is sin that we really don't want to let go of. We know we should. We know it's not right, and we don't want to indulge in it, but we want to hold it back, all right? We want to hold it back just in case, just in case I need it, just in case I want it, all right? And so what happens is as long as that's there, as we grow and mature and it's allow the Holy Spirit to grow, but you know, that, that closet is still there. And what can happen is over a period of time, that closet, the, the temptation, you know, the temptation can be there, and it gets more and more tempting to go open up that closet door. It's kind of like, uh, I know through the years, uh, people that quit smoking and struggle to quit smoking. And it's like, you know, you, you're going to quit smoking, so you put a pack of cigarettes in your pocket. And, and you, you walk around, and, uh, you know, the more you have that cigarette in your pocket, it's so handy that you, you have a greater desire than if you would just let go of it. And I know people that have done that and, and get, got by with it. But I want to tell you, it, the best thing you can do is get away from the temptation. The Bible tells us to, to flee temptation. What did he tell uh, Timothy? He said, flee a useful temptation. Get away from it. Don't sit there and be tempted. Allow yourself to be tempted. How close can I get to the fire and don't get burned? I know he said, you get away from it. And that's what we're talking about here. When I am dwelled by the Holy Spirit of God, okay, and I get start giving him more and more of my life. We call it sanctification. I give him more and more of my life. I set more and more of my life aside for God. Then what happens is, but I, got, I, I, just, just, I can't let go of all of it. And you'd be surprised. You think, well, I can, I do. You would be surprised when the time comes how that devil can find. Maybe it may not be no great sin, and it may not be nothing like adultery or, or anything like that. But it can be a sin like maybe a spreading gossip. It might be a sin like creating some dissension, you know, say, or unforgiveness. We don't think about those. We think about those big sins. You know, we look at the, the homosexual movement and we look at adultery and we look at all these kind of things. And those big sins, and we know we wouldn't do that. But those little sins, you know, they, they're still sin, aren't they? And there's no, no white lies. And there's no white. They're all black. And so we want to be sure that, that we're living out this life in a way that's controlled by the Holy Spirit. So that's the ones that we've been looked at. I said, I don't think I had any more down. And that was about it. So what I'm going to talk about now, real quick, let's see. When we get saved, what happens? Okay, when we get saved, I am sealed by the Holy Spirit of God. I'm sealed by the Holy Spirit of God. We see that over in Ephesians chapter 1 and chapter 4. That means this Holy Spirit is the seal, all right? So I'm sealed by the Spirit of God. And then at the same time, I'm baptized into the body of Christ over there in 1 Corinthians 12, 13. I'm baptized in, that's identified into the body of Christ, immersed into the body of Christ. So those, that's a couple of things we see then. And then we, we see that we're indwelled. We've seen that over in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 6, verse 19. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. He's living within you. So we're indwelled. So we have the baptism and we have the, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And then we have the regeneration. And that means to be born again. We've seen that over in Titus chapter 3. So those four things, those are permanent. They never change. I am born again. I'm sealed. I'm baptized. I'm indwelled. That never changes. Okay? Those four things are permanent forever. The fifth thing that happens is the indwelling. And I discovered that with you. When he moves in and he comes into our life, he's indwelling us. He's there now. That's, he's living. Sitting up residence. Brought his baggage, all of his clothes in and everything. He's going to live with us, live in us. 
and then we have to allow him to work in us and through us, okay? So to me, you know, when I, when I look at the life of a Christian, when I look at that experience, when we come to know Christ as our Savior, you know, uh, Jesus came down to this earth, he died on that cross, he shed his blood, he, through that shed blood we have eternal life, we don't deserve it, we've never done anything to earn it, God through his grace, through mercy, he didn't kill us, he gave us, kept us alive until we could repent and put our faith in Christ, that's God's grace, but you know, that the idea is that I need to, I need to live this out. I need to let people see what Christ has done for me. And so I am indwelled by the Holy Spirit. God took his son back to glory, didn't he? We see after the death, burial, and resurrection, there after 40 days, Jesus ascended back to heaven. But the great news is, you know, the greatest the news after that point in time was he sent his spirit. The Holy Spirit come down, and the day the Holy Spirit is doing those things in our lives as Christians. If you want to have that power, if you want to have that presence in your life, what you need to do is you need to turn from your sin. You need to turn to God, and that's called repentance, a change of heart. I don't want to live like the world anymore. I don't want to be condemned to my sin anymore. I want forgiveness of my sin. I want a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to know in my heart that when I breathe my last breath on this earth, I'll be in glory. To be absent from the body is to be present from the Lord as scriptural. I can know that I know that I know. The Bible tells me these things are written that you may know that you have eternal life. So when somebody says you can't know if you're saved until after you die, that's not scriptural. Okay, so let's just pay attention. Just, I just believe the God. I believe God. I believe what his word says, and that's what he says. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and for this time. We pray you'd be with each one of us as your children. That we truly uh, keep moving toward that point of being totally sanctified, totally controlled by the Holy Spirit. But then we know, Lord, this side of glory, the world, the flesh, and the devil, they hinder us. They hold us back. So we ask you, Lord, just to strengthen us for the work you've called us to do. May we be a living testimony of your great love. And we pray for those that don't know Christ that today they might experience your love when they put their faith and trust in Christ and have forgiveness of their sins and have a guarantee of a home in heaven someday. We thank you for what you've done as we did this little study, Lord. We pray it was a blessing to you, Lord, and a blessing to those that heard it. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.